Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Very good. Okay, uh, I'd like to start this session. My name is Joseph Todd, and uh, I'm a CEO of uh, Mock Design. Uh, I'm also a front end track chair for this DrupalCon Munich, so I would like to take uh, this opportunity to thank to all of previous speakers and also to you who came and supported speakers and wanted to learn some new stuff. So thank you for making this uh, conference awesome. Um, at Mock Design, uh, Mock Design is a Slovak based uh, Drupal development uh, company. Uh, we build uh, online communities for non-profit organizations and also for businesses. And we are also very passionate about uh, bringing uh, great design to Drupal. Uh, we also do a lot of work, uh, design work for uh, Drupal community. Uh, maybe you can recognize some of the infographics of which we did. We also uh, created a branding for Drupal 7 and also marketing materials for uh, Drupal 7 launch and the parties which were happening around the globe. I also have some of the infographics here, so feel free to come after the session and take some with you. All right, so um, I told you something about myself and I would like to hear something about yourself. So um, on the count of three, can you please all shout your name? One, two, three. Okay, I got some, his Vlado and his Martin. I know them because they work with me, so, okay. Um, how many of you are designers? Okay, uh, themers? Oh, themers are probably the biggest group, uh, developers. Okay, and how many of you are business guys or project managers? Okay, anything else? Do we have any other special position here? Okay, so uh, today I would like to talk about the strategy behind designing for CMS. And uh, in order uh, to begin, I would like to share with you my story and uh, what different experience I have with, uh, with design. So, um, since I was a kid, I was always around uh, computers. I was playing with them, hacking uh, BIOS and uh, Windows 95 or 3.1. I remember uh, that I got a note from a teacher because uh, we had a computer class and the computer was so slow, I tried to hack the BIOS and I screwed up something so the teacher got angry. But um, I became basically the guy that fixes uh, computers for everyone in the family. And uh, it got actually so annoying that I wanted to start charge, charging for phone calls, which I got from my brother or father or whoever. So um, then next to playing uh, Transport Icon or Age of Empires, I, started, I discovered Photoshop. So I was like, hey, I can do some photo manipulations. I did uh, a lot of uh, retouching. I really liked it. I'm not sure if others liked it, but uh, uh, I ended up actually designing uh, posters and flyers for different events, and I got my first real job with a printing company. Um, I worked there as a print designer, designing a lot of uh, packages for different products, and uh, eventually they asked me to design and build uh, a website for them. So uh, this was something new to me, so I learned some HTML, CSS, and I put together something in Dreamweaver. So this was my very first experience with web. And uh, then around uh, 2004, I decided that this is something which I really like, and I would like to uh, do it for a living, so I dived uh, deeper in this. I built some websites, some static websites for some friends or local companies. and. Um, after some time, it got, uh, in a way, annoying because they were always getting back to me, ask for changes, do this, do that, I don't like this, I need to change this text and I cannot do. So I, I was thinking there must be something, uh, something where they could manage the website for themselves. So I found out uh, about the CMS thing. It was, it was quite new for me at that time. 
And I started to play with uh, uh, many different schemas like uh, Joomla or Typo3 or Modix. And uh, on the end, I found some uh, great uh, article about how to build your first website in Drupal. And basically, that changed my life. So I started uh, around time when Drupal 4.6 was uh, very fresh. It actually came out just. And a few years later, or months later, I started to work with some US uh, companies as a designer and a themer. And my first uh, job with one of the, that com those companies was to theme three uh, basically exactly the same sites. They just had different colors and, you know. Uh, so I started working on that project and the first one took me about 100 hours to do that. And then the second was about 60 hours, so I felt like, okay, I'm getting somewhere. And then I did the last for about 35 hours. And um, so I made some, some progress. And uh, I was actually very grateful that they didn't fire me after the 100 hour project because it was certainly too long. But um, it was great. At the time, I was working with some very uh, excellent Drupal developers who are, many of them are uh, core contributors or uh, they uh, created a, tons of modules which we use every day. And uh, I also got to the first DrupalCon, uh, it was in Seged. And in Washington, we had our first Drupal designers meetup. So that was wonderful. We uh, spent like five hours just discussing Drupal and talking how we could make it um, you know, more nice. Because the one thing which I heard a lot at that time was that Drupal is ugly. How many of you have heard this? phrase. All right. Sometimes, yeah. So um, I knew that it's not actually true. I knew that it's not about Drupal. I knew that Drupal can be used to build uh, many wonderful websites. Uh, so my usual answer to that was, no, it's not Drupal. Drupal is not ugly, but the themers are lazy. <laughs> and that was including me, maybe. but. Uh, anyways, uh, in 2009, I became I co-founded uh, uh, Mock Design and I became a CEO. And my responsibility shifted from uh, visual design into uh, business development. I also do a lot of user experience design, and sometimes my colleague let me also manage some project. So uh, I got yet another perspective to design. So uh, the three pers perspectives which I would like to talk today are uh, from a designer, uh, from a themer, and from a CEO. What I, I would like to share some ideas uh, and things which I learned and things which I would like to know when I started to design for, for Drupal. Um, basically, how to uh, create a successful design, which is easy to theme, which is uh, cost effective, which is still beautiful, and it's meeting uh, client's need. In other words, basically how to make everyone happy. So I'll, I'd like to start uh, from a designer perspective. Um, there will be several key points which I'd like to mention. First one is uh, the difference between print design and uh, web design. Uh, many times, actually it was my experience, also one other designer which we hired later, uh, many, many of us come from the print uh, design background. And there are several differences which, which I'd like to point out. Uh, first, of, first of that is that um, the, there is a difference between the print canvas basically and the screen on which the web design is displayed. Uh, the size of the print canvas, it's always the same. You have the st uh, exact dimensions of uh, newspaper or you have the poster or flyer. And you can look at it on, in the street at home. It always has the same dimensions. But when you design a website, it can be very different 
when you look at it on a large monitor, on small, when you look at it on a tablet or on some mobile device. Uh, so we need to think about this perspective. How will my design look on across multiple uh, devices? And there has, there has been a great session about this, uh, I believe, yesterday. So I encourage you to uh, listen to that. Another, another difference is that uh, for print, uh, usually, usually designed with a 300 DPI, uh, which could be a problem if you design, uh, if you would design websites uh, with 300 DPI because the files would be just very, very uh, large and uh, it would improve, um, affect the performance of the website. Also, uh, you need to take care uh, about the uh, image compression, you need to save the files for the, for the web and uh, not, uh, you know, just as a standard JPEG. And uh, also, I encourage you to learn about the differences between JPEG and uh, PNG files. And uh, I usually use JPEG when it's a lot of colors and different shapes. And when it's less colors and or some transparency needed, uh, always use PNG. Also, colors are uh, different. For print, you design with, uh, uh, we call it SMIC in Slovakia. Uh, but for web, you design with RGB. And many times, uh, you design something on a monitor, then you print it, and you are scared how it will look on, uh, in, in the real life because the, colors may, the color profile of the printer may be different or whatever. So you need to make sure that you use the correct formats for, uh, for what you are trying to achieve. Uh, there are also some other uh, problematic uh, elements or things which might cause some issues. And it's uh, shadows, gradients, or rounded corners, or typography. Many of these things can create uh, some overhead when, when uh, actually trying to theme that. And I know that with uh, current new technologies, uh, it might not be as big problem or it's much more flexible but it's still very good to learn about what the limitations are. Uh, another difference is uh, when you design a poster, you have the full canvas behind you, the full space, and you just place uh, the element, element somewhere where it will look good. But when you design for a web, you need to be very precise about the positioning of the elements. You need to, and the best way to do that is to use grids. And Mark Walton, who was a speaker at uh, DrupalCon, and he also spoke at several DrupalCons exactly about this problem. He has done a great work about it. I encourage you all to uh, read about it and learn about it. If you are not using grids, you are most probably in trouble. Uh, another thing which may cause problems is uh, interactivity. You usually don't. Uh, how many many chances to use interactivity with interactivity when you design for print? Uh, maybe you can put there some uh, QR code or something like that. But a few years ago, it would, it wasn't even possible. Um, but when you design for a web, then there are uh, suddenly el many elements like you can uh, have animations, you can have forms, buttons, you can have different jQuery effects. And uh, the, key, the key is to know when and uh, how to use them. And I will talk about this a little bit later. Um, so these were uh, the differences between print design and uh, web design. I'd like to take some time and uh, talk about what I consider a successful design. And to me, it is a design which, where you set a goal and then you meet the expectation. And uh, how many of you are from Munich? Is there any one from Munich? Okay, so maybe you don't understand this picture, but it, it happened in Munich and Sergio Ramos kicked the penalty and we ran really high. So 
Okay, since we are in Munich, I thought that this is a good, uh, good illustration of how the goal is not met. So, um, first thing is you always have to think before you design. Many times it happens even to me, it's like, okay, when I hear the first, uh, for the first time about a project, I suddenly have this image of this shiny website in my mind and I am in a mood, of, okay, let's go. I want to design, I don't want to do, I don't want to talk, I don't want to listen, I just want to design. I want to put this idea which I have in my mind on uh, in the computer and uh, work on that. But uh, it's really important that you take the time and uh, focus on, what, on the needs, not on the picture in your mind. Always do the research. Find out uh, what is the most important thing for the client. Find out what is the core of his business. Learn about uh, what are the needs that he has. What is, the, what is the, even the purpose why he wants to design a website or why he wants to make redesign. What are the things which are not working on the current website and he wants to improve in the new uh, version. Also, uh, um, find out what is the message that he wants to, uh, to convey or to bring. What is the, who is the target group? Is the website aimed for children? Is it for men in uh, between 40 to 50 years? Um, find out what is the thing which will eventually make the difference, what will make the conversion or uh, the point when, uh, for example, the product is sold. Another idea uh, or advice is always design for users. Uh, users are very interesting. They don't like to think. Uh, they basically act intuitively. They scan the page and they click on the first reasonable uh, link which they find. They're also impatient. If there is something which is not working on the website, if there is something where uh, for it's not working as they would like to work it, if, or if it takes it too long for them to find the information, they will leave. They also get very easily distracted. And your goal as a designer is to guide them and help them uh, keep their focus. Uh, another thing uh, is they uh, hate visual noise. I call it a digital claustrophobia. And I know that my, I actually am very affected with this. And uh, I feel much better when there is a lot of white noise, uh, a white space um, in a website. It's not very cost, uh, cluttered. Um, users like conventional patterns. Basically, they expect that the same task which they perform on different websites, they will be able to execute on every website. If they log in here, they want to log in here everywhere. If they have the navigation on top, they want to have the navigation on top everywhere. So uh, they are, uh, sometimes users are like horses, you know, they have the uh, shields on the eyes, or how you call it, and they just run di one direction which they have. And uh, the last advice which I would have for designer from the design perspective is uh, think about beauty versus usability. Many times we think that the more awesome effects, the more hot new stuff we put to the website, the more awesome it will be. But uh, in fact, it's in most of the cases, it's the exactly the uh, opposite. Um, For me, uh, there are basically two uh, things which I kind of consider the holy gra uh, grail of web design, and that is uh, content is the king, and keep, keep it simple, stupid. For me, design is um, just a supporting element. It helps users to focus on what is most important, and in web, it's information, is the content. And our goal as a designers is to help them to find the shortest way 
to the information or to the conversion point and uh, use design basically to support the journey. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't be following latest trends or you shouldn't be trying out all the hot new stuff, but uh, you need to find a way how to use that to support the actual user experience. And one thing which we very often as a designers for, uh, like to forget, basically, is that um, maybe 99% of the actual visitors are not designers. They don't care, in fact, if the website is uh, in the, uh, using the latest design trends. They don't care about the col colors many times, about the latest cool fonts. They simply want to find the information which brought them to the website. So I would encourage you to learn about usability, learn about uh, how to create um, a wonderful user experience, and think about a visitor and not as a designer. So uh, just to recapitulate, Go through again. Uh, print design versus web, versus, uh, web design. Uh, uh, what is the successful design? We need to design for users, and we need to care more about the usability rather than about the beauty. All right. So I'm going to talk now about. Um, the perspective of themer. What would I tell a designer if I was a themer? Uh, there are several things. One is uh, there's this ongoing discussion if designer should be able to code his own designs, if he should learn the CSS, HTML. And uh, my answer to that is um, yes. Basically, design is only 15 to 25 percent of the whole project. Uh, as a designer, we would like to think that design is the most important thing, but uh, in fact, there is this other 75 percent which from which the project consists of. And uh, in order for our designs to be successful, we must understand what the other 75 percent is. So I encourage you to learn about Drupal. Uh, build the site for yourself. Uh, maybe you can build your own portfolio there. And uh, uh, try to understand what are the, the elements of Drupal. What is the theme? What are blocks? What are regions? Um, learn about all the new technologies that come out. Learn about uh, how mobile or responsive uh, work. Uh, Talk to developers. Talk to them and find, I'm sorry, find out how they actually use these new technologies and uh, how they actually deliver the project, how they, uh, how they operate on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, also get feedback from them. Uh, get feedback on design. Ask them if this fancy new stuff which you want to do, if it's doable if uh, you should change it or if it's okay like this. Uh, according to Steve Krug, testing with one person, uh, one person or one user is 100% 100, 100 better than testing with known. And it's true. The more feedback you get, uh, the better your design can be. And uh, if you learn all this, it will help you essentially to, to put the elements on the place where they naturally would belong in Drupal, which can make them uh, theming easier in, in many cases. Probably the, the most common issue with uh, designers, which I found as a themer, was uh, inconsistency. Uh, many times there is, a, for example, a block on the home page, uh, and then there is the same block on a secondary page and they look completely different. Although it's the, exactly the same information, it just looks different on different places or on the website. Or for example, just the block title has different font or different margin or border. So um, 
If possible, use the same layout for, for views, for blocks, for headlines, font size, line heights, and all the different uh, elements. Also, try to design in a generic way. Um, for example, don't put two, uh, don't put same block in two different sidebars. It's easier when there is only one block and it's only uh, same uh, same place. Keep try to keep things simple. Don't unnecessarily overcomplicate your design. Another thing which we need to think is content navigation. How will user get from point A to B? How will how will he get from homepage through uh, some listing page to the detail? Don't miss uh, read more links, for example, or breadcrumbs. Uh, also, use standardized uh, layouts, uh, grids. I use uh, 90, uh, 960 grid with 12 columns. I found that uh, working best for me. Also, be consistent in uh, image sizes. Many times, uh, we just like that there is some space. OK, I'll fill it with some image. And then on another place, the same image is larger or it has a different shape. And uh, it would be just much easier if they, they look the same. And also, I think uh, for me as a visitor, it would be also better if things look uh, the same. So the last advice which I would give as a themer is clean up your uh, Photoshop file. Uh, if you look at these two uh, pictures, you'll see that there is a clear difference between the first where all the layers just have some random name. They are organized as they came. There is no logical uh, way how they are arranged or grouped. So always name the layer. Always arrange them in a way how they appear in the design. Go from top to bottom and uh, by specific parts, header, sidebar, block, and uh, for example, a single node. Also, um, when you are designing with uh, CS5 or CS6, uh, then uh, maybe themers are having some older version of Photoshop. And if you use too many groups, uh, nested groups, uh, the file can actually be corrupted and they might not be able to uh, open it all. It will end up with something similar like this. So to summarize, uh, learn how to code your design, be consistent, and uh, always clean up after yourself. I'm getting to the third perspective, which is uh, from the point of view of uh, CEO of the company. As a CEO, there are basically two things which, uh, which uh, I am interested in in the project. I, of course, want it to be successful. I want the client to be happy. But I uh, want that it would be cost effective. And I want that it would be delivered on time. So. Uh, I have, all right. I'll jump to cost effectiveness first. Um, as I said, uh, design is 15 to 25 percent of the time. But what is important is that how the design will affect the the actual length or or the time needed to theme or to develop the uh, the website. Two designs, for example, they may cost the same amount of money, but the development can, for one, can uh, be, uh, can take uh, double of the time. If you make some, some mistakes or if you uh, do some things which, for example, some of the things which I mentioned earlier, it can just uh, add overhead and uh, it can be just more uh, expensive. So what are the factors which affect the cost of design or a theme? Uh, it's everything which I mentioned before, uh, plus several others. One is the first thing which we uh, started to do is we always design a style guide for a project. It's a page or it's a uh, Photoshop file where you have all, the, all of the uh, Drupal elements, where you have all the HTML elements. 
and you design them. Many times it's very easy to forget, for example, to design tabs for uh, uh, content editing or uh, um, to miss out some details in the footer or um, there are many things which can be just missed. And uh, if you have this kind of uh, design manual, then Thingmer exactly knows uh, what he should use and where. Uh, also, what we found out to be very effective is um, to annotate the design with uh, kind of post-it notes or uh, descriptions uh, where you will dis uh, describe what exactly which uh, part of the page is for. For example, there is a, there is a block with some, some notes, some listing, for example, of news. And you can say that this is the news. This, it's coming from, you know, the, uh, it's a view, uh, view of news content type. Or this is uh, some slider on the home page, and it should be uh, using separate content type for it. And if you're not sure how exactly it should work, um, talk to developers or to project managers. But this can speed up uh, the theming very much. Uh, Another advice is design only what is necessary. Many times uh, there are pages which basically look the same. Uh, they have the similar information, but for example, it's just different content type, or it's different uh, category of the same content type. Uh, and you don't need to design all of the pages. Just design uh, what's, what's uh, necessary. Also, try to use real-life content. Uh, only if possible, uh, lorem ipsum can sometimes be very risky because it can look very nice. But then also uh, think about what is required and what is optional content. Because if you put optional content everywhere and you fill it and you design it and it looks very nice, but then in real life, uh, the users don't fill this kind of information it can suddenly just look very broken. And uh, so keep this in mind and try to uh, use uh, real life content when, when it's just possible. Also, it's much easier for a client to imagine or to, to accept design if there is a real life content uh, rather than just some dummy images or text. So, uh, Another thing which uh, considers me as a uh, CEO is uh, delivering on time. One thing which helps is to define all of the terminology in the, be in the beginning of the project. Try to find out um, exactly which kind of labels, for example, you should use for, for different content pieces. Uh, what should the button say? What should be the uh, read more, for example, link? Also, uh, what, what are the uh, categories, for example, of the content? Because uh, many times we design, uh, for example, uh, breadcrumbs or some navigational uh, hierarchy with some very short category. But for example, category can be for two lines. And it suddenly breaks up, breaks the whole uh, design. And, uh, if you define these kind of things in, uh, in the beginning, then you can save a lot of overhead by coming back and fixing and uh, presenting and fixing again. Uh, okay. uh, always try to QA your designs with a project manager or if possible also with client. Uh, get as much feedback as you can, but don't forget to set some rules for feedback. Uh, always set uh, rules for, for example, rounds of feedback or rounds of changes. And uh, don't leave the project open-ended. Many times it happens that we are getting close to uh, delivery, and then uh, we think we actually finished the project. We started to design it. Uh, we start to theme it or develop it, and we find out, oh, we forgot to design this specific content type or this specific page where it looks just completely different. So always double check that you have designed everything because then it can, again, 
cause some delays in uh, production or when working. So, uh, cost effectiveness and delivering on time. Those are the two key things which uh, I am concerned about when uh, I look at the design process from the CEO perspective. I also have some resources which I, uh, which I, some of them created and some of them I have found. There are several Drupal elements or style guide uh, created for uh, Drupal specifically and uh, feel free to get the links from the slides. The slides are already uploaded to the session description page. There are also modules uh, which basically will create you a page with all of the HTML elements so you can then theme them uh, very easily. And also there is a video from uh, LA Drupal uh, with the title, Your Design as a Theme Sucks. <laughs> and it's also a great uh, uh, resource uh, to understand how themers think and how uh, it can be beneficial for you to learn. Uh, so thank you very much for your, uh, for your time. And I hope that uh, you have learned something. And uh, I would like to ask you to fill the um, to give me some feedback on the session, and I, I would like to open up for some questions if you have any. Yes? Yes, so the question was, as the web is moving forward with responsive design, if I found it harder to design in Photoshop? And I think that you are asking if it should be mobile first and design in a browser and these kind of things, right? Okay. Um, to be honest, there are several, or there are a few cases where I would be concerned about that, and especially if it's maybe a small project, and uh, for example, I used to design some of the things in a browser even before the responsive thing was there, but because it was just faster for me you know, to spend some time on uh, in the Photoshop, but just to create the design in, in, in a browser. But to be honest, I, from the experience or from the projects which we have right now, um, we are probably not there yet, so I found it better to design in Photoshop for at this point. And it, this can change very, very soon, even for us. I'm sorry? We are. We are using Compass. Yes, but um, many times it takes uh, time to shift the thinking of the whole company, you know, and all of the processes which are then tied to it. Yes, yes, or the projects which we have are, for most of the clients which we have, mobile hasn't been the number one um, reason or so. Yes? Also, we designed a mobile application. We designed it in Photoshop and then uh, tested it out in uh, in some uh, phone or whatever, and then came back to change some things or some elements. So, no. Yes.
Uh, we tried it on one project, but uh, we ended up actually going back to wireframes and design from them because uh, it was a project where we've been working with some other company and they were basically building the design, uh, building the website from the, out of our wireframes and we've been waiting for them to finish and do the design. And uh, maybe it was from, for a time reason, we decided to go to work from uh, wireframes. But um, I don't know, I don't really have a lot of experience with this kind of approach. Any other question? All right, I'd like to thank you to all and uh, hope to see you sometimes next. And also feel free to come and grab some uh, infographics or uh, design stuff. Dobre, ja musím utekať. Čo je to aj kino, ne? Či čo? Internet.